jumping on here Saturday morning. Um, I was messing around with this guitar today. I cleaned it up a little bit. The strings are still great on it. I have the uh, Slinky Cobalt 9 to 46 set, so that's a hybrid set of uh, Cobalts. I really, really love this guitar. This is the uh, 2012 Gibson Les Paul Studio with uh, EMG 57 66 pickup in it. Uh, I really don't and do like them. I it's really hard for me to I go back and forth with these damn pickups, man. It's like some some days I like them, some days I don't. I think a lot of it has to do with the mid profile. Um, I do like the neck pickup though. <laughs> on the neck but not so much on the bridge i hate to say but anyways yeah um i really am a big fan of passive pickups these days and most of my guitars have if they have emgs they're all actives i don't have a set of hz's yet um i did see in the 2017 nam emg showing that they had like this passive uh active passive type pickup it looks like um i don't know what it's called something passive something you know Anyways, I, I really am interested in trying those out. Um, I like a passive pickup, and I do like EMGs to some degree. So, yeah, retroactive is I think is what they're called. Retroactive looking pickup. I don't know if it's passive or if it's, or it's active, but um, I'd like to try those out. What do you think about EMGs? Are you a fan of EMGs? Um, like I said, I have them in some of my guitars, but not all of my guitars. But uh, the ones that I do have are the 81s the, in the 5766 and the 85. And I think I have an 83 in one of them. Anyways, so um, yeah, like this, uh, just Jackson right here behind me has 81, 85, and there's one on that wall over there that has the 81 and 83, or is it the 86? I don't know. But this is 5766. Um, on a clean tone, they sound really, really good. This guitar in particular, on a different amp, I'm using the 6505 right now, but um, let's, uh, let's dial up. This is the amp, just the amp and the, my delay pedal in the loop. I mean, the amp is set to be break up already. I lowered the gain a little bit. We're in the clean channel without the crunch engaged, so it's just a clean, clean. Yeah, I mean, definitely has its own characteristic that's very unique. It doesn't sound so wolfy in the neck, and sometimes on some neck pickups, they'll go wolfy, where I like to have a more trebly neck. Anyways, um, let's see, I've got the big sky right here. Uh, there's one, yes, there it is, Nimbus. Yeah, there you go. Some ambience through the 6505 MH in the clean channel. Yeah, I really love um, the Big Sky. I really only play through like one or two patches and I'll modify them with different algorithms that the, you know, the machine has on it. What do you think about that? Sounds pretty good, huh? I'll take off the chorus. So I was thinking about it last night. Um, 
I, I guess I'll use this whole iTrack, iPocket, Focusrite, iPhone setup that I'm running right now primarily as like a blog, right? Like a vlog. I think the, the chorus actually added a little bit more to it. Doesn't sound too good of gain though, but um, yeah, so we're still in the clean. The gain pedal you heard was obviously the BEOD Friedman pedal. It's such a badass pedal. Uh, that Friedman pedal is really a game changer for a lot of different amps, and I have in my mind like a video making um, where I just kind of go through several amps with the BEOD pedal, like maybe this um, EVH, maybe the Black Star behind me, the Fender behind me. You've already heard it through the Vox. I, I don't know, do you, would you be interested in hearing the BEOD pedal through several amps, um, ranging from Vox to Fender to Orange to PV, Black Star, Marshall, and then EVH? Is that something you're interested in? If it is, just let me know in the comments and maybe I'll work on that. This seems like a lot of editing, you know? to getting my hands on the uh, Friedman Dirty Shirley pedal as soon as that comes out. I'm really interested in that. And incidentally, on the last um, collaborated video with uh, Pixie Licks and Phil McKnight and Robert Baker and uh, Tone King, uh, Phil was talking about the distribution center, whatever I think it's called, like boutique amp distribution video that HP made, it's HP 42. Uh, he's a guy in Germany. Really badass. <laughs> really badass studio, guys. Super awesome. A anyway, so he, he kind of ran around the um, boutique amplifier distribution or whatever in California. And I, I was blown away because he had, Phil had recommended that video, right? It's just saying, like, this is my favorite video of NAM 2017. I saw that video. I couldn't believe it. How many people they had there and how many different just things. I mean, it's like when I see something like that here in America, it makes me really want to buy their products, right? Like, where's a collaboration of multiple brands and companies coming together in one distribution manufacturing warehouse. That sounds awesome to me. Anyways, that's just a side note. Like, Phil had recommended it on the Pixie Licks show. I went and watched all 30, 45 minutes of it or whatever it was, and I, 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 I couldn't turn it off. You know, me, I work in a manufacturing warehouse distribution environment myself along the logistics and inventory line. And, and seeing something like that on the guitar side of things was really, really awesome for me. It's just like, wow, that's what I do. Distribution manufacturing operations and uh, inventory, right? And logistics, but for guitar stuff. And it's like America, you know, it's like, wow, I really want to go do something like that. That's what I would love to do. I was telling my wife, it's like, we might have to move to California because that's something I never knew existed. And that's something I want to I want to be a part of, you know. So definitely, I recommend that as well. Echoing Phil McKnight's uh, "Know Your Gear" recommendation on the HP video, where he's running around through the boutique amp distribution Friedman Friedman, you know, side of things. It's really awesome. <laughs>
it's pretty interesting today. I was messing around with my uh, guitar tone. And, you know, just by, on the 6505 MH, you know, they're really small knobs, but any little movement has a big impact. I just pulled back some mids and a little bit of the highs back. I was messing with, um, I have a Donner pedal here, an equalizer Donner pedal, so it's a real small micro equalizer. And I set like a mid hump profile in there to a little bit of boost to give myself a lead kick. Let's see how that works. So this is the guitar in Friedman. And here comes the EQ pedal. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, my idea for that was just to give it like a, a little boost, but I think I did it a little too much. Some sounding uh, EQ pedal there, huh? So here's just the amp and the guitar. Yeah, pretty, pretty awesome, dude. That's just the Donner EQ pedal on and off. resting around on my laptop here with a Focusrite uh, 18 i8 and I'm using BandLab as my DAW which is a pretty free simple to use DAW like along the lines of very slim down and easy to use and I was able to get some drum MIDI samples off of my Easy Drummer 2 and so like you know I'm just vlogging here I'm just talking to you guys like how what I'm thinking and what I'm thinking is like now that I have this DAW, you know, real simple, I like, I have Reaper and I like Reaper, but it's like too hard for me to use. I'm, I'm really Reaper dumb, to be honest. But I was able to import a MIDI drum section that I kind of pieced together on Easy Drummer. Have a listen to this. Yeah. What do you think about that? So, I think it's a little adventurous. So I need to scale back the drums and all the hits and all that. And I want to definitely start writing tracks using something like this. So yeah, using BandLab. I think BandLab is free. Um, I got turned on to it from my BandLab, from my uh, Jam Hub Green Room, I think is what I have. The Jam Hub Green Room, which I use as a mixer. And they're no longer in business. They went out of business, Jam Hub, the company. But I believe they also created this BandLab thing, right? And so. You know, I've been a user of BandLab because kind of chicken scratching around now that I have an actual USB audio interface to put, to put my guitar onto the tracks. So I'm now starting to think of drums and like, yeah, like. Yeah, it sounds pretty awesome. I'm going to spend more time with that this weekend. That's my plan. I'm off Monday, so I'll probably jump on here later tonight or tomorrow 
I'm gonna mess around with some drum tracking and make something very simple and just see how it sounds to this whole Focusrite iTrack audio interface uh, for the iPhone and upload it. So anyways, yeah, that's what I've been up to. Just kind of vlogging, just kind of telling you guys what, what I've been doing and you know what's cooking down here. Uh, tell me what you think, man. Um, I recommend go watching that video, just echoing what Phil McKnight said on the uh, Boutique Amp Distribution from HP42 on his channel. And, uh, you know, keep your eyes open for that Dirty Shirley pedal coming out from Friedman because the BEOD pedal is fabulous. And if, if the Dirty Shirley pedal can be that, but in a different way, but scaled down from what the BEOD is, then that'd be really cool. Because like I said in my previous video, my BEOD pedal, I went inside and I turned the trim pot almost all the way down because there was too much distortion, too much saturation. It's not a bad thing. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the pedal. It's just for my taste, it was a little too spicy. So I trimmed it down a little bit. Anyways, that's been this guitar and just showing you kind of what's going on here this weekend in the studio and we know where I'm at and what I'm planning on doing here in the future. So pretty cool little vlog. We'll call this vlog number three because I did one and two. Now this is the third one. So I'll catch you guys uh, either today or later on or tomorrow. You guys have a good